Welcome back to 918 Disc Golf. Today we are at the highly requested Post Oak Lodge course, which is currently set up for the PDGA Junior Worlds Championship. We're going to be playing the layout that will be played in the tournament today. There are some pars that are a little off. Uh, and we'll clarify those on the tee pad. With all that out of the way, let's get into it. All right, kicking things off, hole one here. 550 foot par four to start it off. He's behind the camera right now, but it is gonna be a battle one-on-one, -on -one, uh, Taylor and myself, to see who can come out on top and be the better junior. Sprinkled throughout, uh, while we are going to be playing the holes, I also wanna go into our disc selection as we play, so that way you guys can kind of get an insight to see how we would play the course. So starting off here, landing zone, you wanna find yourself pretty straight off the tee. If you end up bending to the left with the way that the hole shapes, you're gonna find yourself not being able to approach very easily. So the straighter you can get, the better. Uh, you don't wanna to push too far, which is why I'm going mid-range. What a kick. That is an amazing kick and pretty much right where you wanna be. Try to do better than that, my guy. I'm gonna to try to. I kinda of wanna be a little bit more aggressive. We're gonna put the hex down, be throwing our lotus, been falling in love with this disc. Uh-oh. Oh, actually. Skip hard. So the thing is, although that looks like it's gonna be in a good spot, it's gonna be tucked in on the trees. It's a little harder to get to the green from there. But for the people that don't know, what does that disc fly like? You got flight numbers? Yes, it's a 85 negative one two, but with clash discs, their numbers are kind of off. You're just gonna have to throw it. If it feels good, throw it and try to find a spot in your bag for it. Flies like a T-Bird three, but a little bit more glidey. That's the best way to describe it. Probably a little more turn, I like it. Yeah. To clarify, we are playing without warmups. Uh, it's the after work grind for Taylor and I. So we came out here straight after we got off. If we don't go as fast as we get here, then we don't have enough daylight to finish. Beat the sun, baby. Right here, like I said, is typically where you wanna land. If you can push a little further straight into this little gap right here, you're gonna find yourself with a better upshot, but you can see the basket through the trees. So we're gonna go um, T-Bird three on the approach. Probably a little fast, but I just wanna try to penetrate as far as I can. That needs to go left now. That's a T-Bird 3 for you. Yeah, it's okay. If you if you take par on this hole, it's probably a good score. Very easy to find yourself in the rough on the right or left, and you're going to take a bogey at best. I've definitely taken a double bogey on this hole, so thanks for uh, shouting that out. All right, this is what happens when you get a little aggressive. You find yourself on the rough and the left, but I can see the basket there, except I don't have like a real true line to get there. So we need to just minimize the mistakes and just make sure that we get our par. And there's a hero shot when you needed that it. That was a hero shot, but in my defense, I felt like I could have hit that gap instead of swinging it out here. <laughs> Take your medicine, folks. Nice little flick with the popcorn. Let it do its thing. Sing it with me, comments. I need a hero. I mean, if there was a hero shot to be had. Circle's head. Now we need to make a putt. Now, normally as the video, I would run this. However, when I came out here and played a sanction round, like, couple weeks ago shot under 900 rated uh, so we're out here for redemption first and foremost I'm laying this up tap in left my hand with confidence though that's all that matters confidence the athleticism is just exploding from you gotta you. get the old leg warmed up you know what I mean all right, before I get into hole two here, I gotta touch on something really cool. This is the first course in Tulsa, not to have turf tee pads, but turf tee pads done right. So we had some professionals come out here and lay these down, and they are fantastic. Probably one of the top features of the course. Hole two, 290 feet, par three, plays out over there, uh, ideally a forehand hole. And it's not super far, but I am gonna go Draco because I want it to fade at the end of the flight and get the skip in towards the basket. First forehand of the day. Get up there. Ooh. Ooh, a little long. I am in the brush pile behind the basket. That should be cleaned up before Junior Worlds, but if not, it's a nice backstop for the disc. For sure. I am also going to go Firebird, my equivalent to a Draco, except this isn't as overstable as his Draco, so which is good for me because I like to make sure to just put on one ankle and have it fight towards the basket. Give me a look here. Ooh, I like that. 
<laughs> Welcome to the tree I hit in my sanction round. So one thing that I like about this hole is like the trees are like perfectly aligned towards the basket. So it's like you can cheat and go on the outside of them, but it's just nice to hit this gap and just watch your disc hover in front of those trees like that. So well designed hole. I like it. And even if you hit some of the trees up here, like he's still just outside the circle. Oh yeah. Well, it's all oh. short. We will get our energy. Good confidence stroke. Like it. I love it. I, I want it. some more of it. <laughs> Real quick intermission, guys. We are on the push for 1,000 subscribers. We greatly appreciate you guys continuing the support. So we want to give some of that support back. We've been doing a giveaway. So for the next disc going into the bag for this video, we're going to have a Draco. These came out laptop with this run so this is the next disc going into the bag in order to be eligible to win this giveaway you have to comment right now what is your favorite overstable driver all right now let's get back to the video all right hole three 400 feet t sign says par four it is actually a par three there is a fire hydrant down there at the bottom of the hill and if you can get next to that you are pretty close to the circle you do want to fade a little to the left at the end of the flight we're gonna go make a three on this one. Just wanna to try to play a flat shot because this does tend to fade at the end of the flight. That's exactly what I'm looking for. Hold that to the right. And uh, that's probably bogey at best, but we'll just see what we can do from there. I'm gonna be a little bit more aggressive. I'm gonna go Halo Roadrunner. I lost my red one. RIP to a real one. How many drummers fail victim to the street? I'm just gonna pump it down there and uh, give myself a look. Smooth. That needs to fade. Eh. Well, it's not in the rough. So progress has been made. That's true. I'm in a horrible spot. How's the weather in there? Horrible. Um, in fact, it's probably raining on me right now, but I have to actually pitch out. There is nothing. So don't end up here. See, Jacob knows how to take his medicine, and the other player does not. Only right now, because I'm out here for redemption. First and foremost, guys, redemption. Zone shot in, just trying to push that fire hydrant. Oh! I should be like five feet. A little rockety skip skip? I'll take it. I mean, Upshot's downhill, and me and Touchy, we don't get along too well, and I have like a helping tailwind, so I'd rather just jump up this into the green or somewhere close. I like it. Yeah, should work. Seat down. Ooh. Take your par. Get out of Dodge. Thank you for the stroke, Jacob. I muchly appreciate you. I've only got my bag on to tap this out just because I know Tim is watching somewhere cringing. Cringing two trees. Cringing two trees. That's a good one. Life comes at you fast out here. You end up in the rough, you're probably taking a bogey. Hole four, par three, 300 feet. This is a fun one. You gotta throw into the woods and the green drops a little bit and the basket's just a little bit to the right. So the idea is just throw a straight shot um, cause you're gonna have a look no matter what. If you wanna be a little bit more aggressive to get a better look, you can go forehand or you can go ultra aggressive and go hyzer over the trees. I played here with a certain someone that tried that and he took a bogey. We're gonna go with the brave little seven speed glidey guy. I just wanna hit this gap and then Figure it out from there. That's gotta get a little bit lower. Yep. That exact tree is the reason why I have not birdied this hole yet. You wanna end up left more than you do right. Left is a little bit more open than the right rough. I am gonna go Nordic Phenom 2. It's a bit of, like it's a pretty flippy PD, uh, but it still fades at the end, so that's what I'm looking for. I'm gonna try to go straight at it, have it fade to the left right at the end of the flight. Should be okay. Yeah, I still fought through and hit a tree up near the green. Probably like, I don't know, I've only played out here once, but like maybe 50-ish feet. Throw in time. Tally mark. Tally mark, second one. Oh yeah, he does have one now. He hasn't Tim had does? one. No, you have one. Oh yes, yes, I do have one, and Tim, it was an ace, yeah. so it was pretty cool. Tim has none yet. Tim has zero. Not ideal, close enough to make that putt. 
All right, more like 85. But in my defense, I thought I hit that tree up there, not this one back here. Maybe you saw it better on the camera. I don't know. We're going to lay it up again. I thought I smoked that branch. <laughs> and once again, another slopey green. So making up shots pretty challenging out here. I like it. Nothing but uphill from there. Yeah. Go me. It's a confident stroke right there, which we'll need because our monthly match is coming up. We'll be filming that soon. So I'm liking what I'm seeing right now out of your putts. And it is at a very cool course that has a lot of history. And the guy that we're playing against has a lot of history at the course that has a lot of history. So you won't want to miss it. It's like history inception. Hole five, a very technical par four, 424 feet. You got to, you got an aggressive line there if you want to try to push something straight and get a skip at the end. But the ideal gap is going to be here on the right. Just take something neutral or stable. Just hit that gap and make sure you're in the clear for an upshot because your upshot is going to be pretty tricky as it is sloped downhill with the basket placed right on the middle. Middle. So you can easily roll with an upshot. It's very tricky. One of my favorite holes here just because of the technicality part of it. So I'm going to go with my neutral disc. I'm going to go with the uh, Dynasty. Shout out to my boy Brian Newport for this one. Shout out Brian Newport for that Dynasty. Hey, let's show the juniors how to, how to not hit first available, shall we? I'm going to do my best. Here's the thing. This hole is on demon time. I know that uh, Kyle probably did a lot of the design out here. I don't know. This hole, I think, was in here before uh, Kyle did any work out here. But whoever did this hole, you're a G. Or a spawn from Satan himself. Here's the problem with that. Yep. It is too far to the left. You need to push so much further and straighter than that. I'm gonna take a par, but the thing is, even if you get all the way up that hill, you're probably still not taking a birdie. Where's the MLG air horns? No idea where that went. All right, Taylor's right there. He still has a long way to go. Just chill, don't go on the right. Please don't do that. Oh, thank God for that tree. I'm gonna tell you guys right now, he is not in a good spot over there. It's just better than where he was. I'm not even sure if it's even better. I think it might be worse. It's further up the fairway, therefore the better by default. Touche. So here's Jacob's lie. He's on the left. He does have a sneaky OG line this way. What I could do, and probably what I'm going to do, is take not either one of these discs, because I don't know why I grabbed them, uh, and go through this on a hyzer and just play for the par. The danger here is this two trees. I'm in danger of smacking with my disc. Timmy himself in the flesh. All right, we're gonna go MD5 for the approach and just play at that tree right in the middle of this gap. It should fade hard way before then. I surprisingly might have a putt from there, which is crazy because I already told you guys on the tee that like you need to get out there for a putt. I could also be completely wrong. I've only played this course once. All right, people watching from home, You've never seen a maximum security prison such as this. Thorns everywhere. And the basket's down there. I don't even think the camera's going to be able to focus on it. But I'm hooked. He doesn't have a lot of options. I don't think I can even get out of here. Go up top here. Oh. <laughs> At least it's away from the thorns, am I right? Yep. Gosh, I softed it so bad. Get down there. Yeah, it might roll a little bit. That would be fine. It's a that long putt. Like a, that's like a 40 footer and it's death putt incoming for sure. This is to save six. Yep. It had every opportunity to oh, go look in. Look at it try to go. Look at it try to go. Oh. It's that. Hey, at least it's a par four. It was a par three when we played Sanction not that long ago. Doesn't help that it's a par four. It's still three strokes over a par. <laughs> Impressive. Trust me, I know you guys might be surprised. I'm more surprised. I have no idea how I got up here from where I landed in my first shot, but we're here. We're going to make the most of it. No, we're not because I suck at putting. Hey, it's still a three-stroke swing, though. <laughs> Woo! 
no doubt. Good putt. All right, hole six, 285 foot par three, plays up right down the middle gap right there, which you'd be tempted to take. And if you're good at putter flip ups, you should take. But there's also a big sky hyzer. The canopy in the trees up there breaks, so we're gonna go destroyer on the uh, far right side. Only danger is, if you hit early, bogey. I am short, I think, but I'm up there for a putt. That's all you can ask for. Torn between a uh, forehand, because you get a forehand flex shot down the middle. Basket's tucked a little bit to the right. We're gonna bust out our flippy goodness, because we usually don't get to throw it unless we're playing in the woods, and I'd consider this a woods hole. I like that. Yeah. Might, yeah, honestly, it might even be a little deep. Yeah, I think I might have sailed that one. I had to commit to a shot because those other ones I was not committing. I think I'm awake now. I've already sweated like two pounds out. We're here. Ooh. Nope. I am not under, unhappy with the effort. So, yeah. as Taylor said, we out here. Oh man. That was definitely a stroke you needed. Honestly, it might not matter at the end of this video. We're just, uh, we're just here trying to uh, show off the course, but also want to play good for you guys so you can see what good disc golf looks like. Luckily, we have a partner on the channel, so someone could be playing bad, someone could be playing good. Right now, that person is Jacob. I think I'm playing pretty average, but thanks, buddy. It's better than what is being displayed by myself. Hole 7, 330 foot par 3. Plays slightly uphill, probably about 30 feet of elevation throughout the hole. Uh, there's a couple different lines you can play up the middle. There's some brush pile in the middle uh, But the ideal play with how the hole shapes towards the end of the fairway you want to take this right gap with a hyzer and Throw a stable disc that's gonna fade right at the end. You need it to fade. It can't go straight. So we're gonna go rive Get lucky uh, I mean it got lucky enough. So yeah. we'll at least get a par I'm going to take the Halo Roadrunner and actually go up the middle on like a hyzer flip up that doesn't get to flat, just kind of stands up on a hyzer and just keeps pushing. I've got a bone to pick with this gap and my mentality right now, so sit tight. Oh, it flipped up to flat. Actually, it should still end up being pretty, pretty good. Yeah. Like, you should have a long putt. Live, laugh, love, baby. Oh, no. Oh. She sat. It's because I said live, laugh, love. I should probably shoot one. No left. Ooh. Another hole that I think that the brush piles will be cleaned up on. Like, I, I there's some stuff out on the fairways that should be out of the way for when you guys are playing, but just uh, keep it in mind. It was here, and that's why we're struggling so hard. Huh. I mean, if you missed, it'd just been poetic. Hole eight, par three, 320 feet. Plays just across a ditch and then back up the hill. A um, couple of options. There is definitely a layup play. If you want to take like a zone and just chip up and then approach the green, that's probably the easiest way to take par. But that's not fun to watch. So I'm going to get as aggressive as I can with a leopard. Leopards are aggressive. They are aggressive. Definitely don't want to cross one of those in a dark alley. You know, also shout out to the fact that it's a six speed. I don't feel like there's that many discs in, in disc golf that are six speeds. The Crave comes to mind as a six and a half because that's also unique. And the Crave is like, dude, you can throw Craves so far. Yeah. If you don't have a Crave, buy one. Oh. And that happened because I don't have a Crave. I myself am going to pretty aggressive play to hit this flex shot. If it works out, there could be some sort of putt. I mean, it plays uphill once you're past that creek. Okay. Oh no. Hey, look, I got lucky too. I literally, I think I'm to the right of you right now. <laughs> Smoked it. Still a putt though. Hi, how are you doing? I knew it. I knew it. <laughs> oh no. Tough hole, tough hole. Yeah, yeah, it is. It is, Cletus. This is a tough hole. 
Don't buckets. worry, Taylor. I got you. Thank you. Thank you. Hole 9, 495 foot, par 4, plays out the center gap here. There is water OB to the left, jail on the right, and the basket plays out the gap, and then probably another, once you're all the way out of the gap, probably about another 150 feet or so. It's probably one that most juniors uh, are going to be looking to birdie. So we're going to go fuse off the tee, just try to play a, a straight hyzer flip. Got a little tree action at the end, but did not hurt it at all, and that should be pretty much routine birdie from there. Got it. Oh, it is flippy. You got to know that. Yeah, you seem to. That's the mistake you keep making. You got to give it more hyzer. And I just don't trust it because I feel like if I put on hyzer, it's not going to want to flip for me, and then that goes in the water. Welcome to my issue with the fuse for like <laughs> two months straight. I have no idea where I'm at. Don't worry, Jacob, I'm coming out. I mean, if you pitch down to me. That's what I'm trying to do is get in a backhand stance. Yeah, I mean, you can just pitch down to me and you're good. That's good. Like I said, this is all you really need. Uh, and then it's just routine up and down. So as long as I don't screw this up, shut up. Should have a birdie. I've missed those before. Tally mark. Wait, no. Nope. That's how you birdie hole nine. That's how it's done, boys and girls and animals and sea creatures. Good putt. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, it definitely feels like a bogey parring this hole for sure. Yeah. Because, I mean, I was in the rough and you saw how easy it was to still get a par, so birdie is a must. Hole 10, 403 foot par three, plays like an S. So go, fairway goes out to the left, then back to the right. Uh, ideally, you could play a big hyzer actually over the top of the trees because it plays pretty straight. Um, or you can get aggressive with a flex forehand, which is what I'm going to do. I'm going to go with the boss. No. You know what's funny is that's actually parable from there. <laughs> Don't ask me how I know. <laughs> yeah, that's plenty. That's all you need. You should have a pretty open look, or it might just be slightly blind. Um, I needed that to fade. There's no shot I have a jump putt. Ooh. Yeah. Why did you sit? Little oh. juice. Looks fine to me. Yeah. Golden opportunity for the throw-in attempt. Back to the pink P2. Fade. Wow. We're huge. That is a double bogey look. Good putt. Saved it out of four. We'll take it. <laughs> Dude, I don't know why I keep yanking them. I think it's because I'm trying to be nice and smooth. There's no need to be nice and smooth. You just, you guys just punch it in there. Just punch it in there. Punch it in there. Hole 11, 280 foot par three plays right over there. Forehand or backhand up the middle shot. We're gonna go forehand with a Draco. Draco, Draco, Draco. Get off it. Skip in. That'll work. That's a nice shot right there, mate. I am not gonna go Draco. I'm gonna go that same gap with my detour. Get through everything. Oh. Out there. What an anti-skip. We've got ourselves a putt that we can miss. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> Not fuck. What a putt. Woo! Someone came to putt today. All right, hole 12. T sign says 180 feet. I think it plays just a smidge longer, but it is slightly downhill. Par three plays right out there. Uh, pretty much just uh, up the middle into the wood shot. We're gonna go back to the fuse and just play a baby hyzer. Oi! Thought that had a chance to ace for a second. Dude, I did too, boy. I'll tell you what. I like that play by Jacob, but all I know is envy. If it's not broke, don't fix it. How about a park job so I don't have to putt, huh? Yeah, that'd be nice. Not gonna be a park job. Ooh. Kick right. Yeah. What? It is a park job. What do you mean? It's back nine. Back nine bandit activated. 
Good Dang. putt. Good putt. Two in a row. Heating up. Small turkey. Gobble, Any gobble, gobble. Three, if you count that putt that I made back on like 10, that was a good putt. So we're, we're heating up. No one freak out. <gasps> but we've got our first birdie of the round. Whoa. Came by way of hole 12. Let's go. Hole 13, 270 foot par three, plays up and then to the right. Can I get a zone there? Yeah. Reliably, no. So we're gonna go Draco and just play it flat, let it fade at the end. Kind of an identical shot to hole 11. Get off it. It's just too fast. So you wanna throw a slower disc because of that reason right there. That actually, like the rest of the rough at this course, could be a bogey. It is definitely a slower forehand shot, but I've been throwing the backhand on this hole pretty good with the popcorn, so I'm it does shape. With it. it does shape well for the backhand, so yeah, you just gotta hit a tighter line. Just pop it. Be technical. Uh oh. Uh oh, that's looking good. Nope, not anymore. Or nope. It, it fought. Oh, did it not? No, it, like it just it. dropped right after that. That kind of. I have no words for that shot right there. What a beautiful Christmas tree and oh. Santa Jacob left you a present. You know it's not a good sign when your best option is a scuba with a fairway out of a tree. Brody Smith, I pray to you. That was pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely got an opportunity to save par. Oh gosh, that's juice. Oh, thank you little twig. Saved by Treat Us. Treat Us, yeah. When Brody sets you up with an opportunity to save your par, you just gotta save your par. Wow, you actually took the box again. Yeah, man, I not warming up my putts. It's really starting to take a toll. It'll show. It'll show. Hole 14, par four, 492 feet. Just so you guys know, when you're playing this hole, you're gonna have to avoid some cars because I'm sure parking will be kind of out a little bit towards the fairway. So that could be dangerous for some. You wanna play just straight out this gap, you can just push straight. In forehand, just whatever you do, get out of this gap to set up your second shot. The basket is located in a cluster of trees once you get out of here. I'm going to take my Calvin Destroyer, throw a forehand, just to assure myself I get out of this gap. Yeah. Oh, fade guy. You, um, you just crashed into a Suburban. I did. Whoop, whoop, whoop. You hear that? Cops are coming. All right, we're going to go Charger. A little flippier of a disc, but ideally just want to try to push and have it fade. Um, realize now that I'm saying that out loud, this disc is a mistake, so we're not going to do that. Right, much better option. I like it. That's fine. It'll do what it does. Yeah, the gravel just destroyed that disc. Probably going to have to come out of the bag, but we're out there. It's a little outside of like where I would throw a zone, so we're going to go Quake, which typically flies pretty straight. Aiming at the right side gap over here and having it fade just into the green at the end. I like that. And I'm right next to the basket, so execute it. Beautiful. I am close enough where I do feel comfortable going with the zone, so I like the backhand, the GT top zone. Throw it out right, get it tight, take your bird. Doing it right. Yeah. Boom. That was a little left side, but it caught. It was. Just gotta keep them shoulders straight at the basket. Can I get a dun dun dun? Da, da, da. Hole 15 is a par three, 370 feet. Just wanna throw into that opening there. Give yourself a look and an opportunity. The basket looks like it's a little bit closer to that tree line, but it's actually in there a good 30 feet. Gonna go Halo Ray. A little flex on her. Ooh, get the fade. It's gonna be a little short. Taking a play from Taylor's book, we're gonna go Champ Wraith. Play more of a flat hyzer on the right hand side. Not enough. Champ, that Champ Wraith be stable. Ooh. Don't do, Not it, gonna don't. do it. Not enough, Kaiser. Stop, this is for you. 
<laughs> We're punching them in there now. Almost into the band. Clutch. Yeah, take that straddle, Scott. Hole 16, par three, 251 feet, straight up that hill. Camera probably does not do it justice. You have the forehand line because it opens up the bigger gap on the left side. I like to take a understable mid-range and just pump it up there, give myself a look. So that's what we're gonna do. Ooh. Got fade before that tree. Yeah, you might still have a putt though. You might still have a putt though. So Taylor, I'm gonna go back in, but I'm gonna throw a fairway. This is a T-bird that's been in the bag for a while. Still has some good stability, but should fight all the way up the hill. El Bag Capitan. Yes. I love that. Oh. Hit a rock. There's something up there. But, but. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it would be the putt you make, too. I got big putted, dude! Hole 17, par three, 370 feet, in my opinion, is probably gonna be the signature hole here. There's a couple of them. This one would take the cake for me. Straight down that hill, you have a plethora of options available. You can go down the middle with something flippy like a mid-range. You can go over the top left with a forehand, over the top right with a backhand. That's what I personally like to throw, so I'm gonna take my pyro. If I hit this gap right in front of the T over the top, it's probably going to be part. That's high in the sky. You don't want that. You want to push a little bit straighter. Oh! Got a pretty far skip into the left. I don't know how the left is. I haven't been over there. All right, like Taylor, I'm going to go on the outside right with a zone. And uh, just put some hyzer on it. Maybe flex it a slight little bit. That's how it's done. It's for par. Dude, I thought you drained it again. Hey, that's been the theme today. Sometimes you're just off and it's okay. <laughs> it looks just, like me on the front 11 holes. It's just like, it comes out of the hand and like my fingers turn into Spider-Man. I don't know, dude. We did this hole a disservice, man. Bogey, bogey. Final hole, hole 18, par three, 220 feet. True island hole, surrounded by a moat. If you're gonna go in the water, go in short. Otherwise, you're probably not gonna get your disc back. Even in the backstop on the back, the disc will usually penetrate through there, so. Really requires a touchy play. You can go hyzer, honestly, underneath here. You can go forehand hyzer. I think it's just take something stable and throw straight at it. That might be gone. Uh-oh. Nope, nope. We're golden. All right, like Taylor said, pretty much just want to go straight at it. I'm going to go pure and uh, give this a little bit of height. Maybe it'll have a chance to go in. Do it. Do it. Oh my gosh. Like, I don't know how that didn't go in. Obviously it was a bad shot. We'll get over it. Behind me, dude. Get out of there. <laughs> if I missed, <laughs> you know, you know, I just, I just said, it, it's just that kind of round. But... And, and that would have been an ace R, ace R. Good All dub, right. Jacob. Take us away. All right, that's going to be a wrap for the post oak preview for Junior Worlds. I hope that you all get a lot of enjoyment out of it. This course is an absolute blast. It is a very tough course with a bunch of tight technical lines, and it will challenge you on every aspect of it. It's also a lot of fun. So if you get a chance to get out here before Junior Worlds starts, I definitely recommend it. Practice will beat video anytime, but if you can't, again, I hope this greatly helps you guys before playing the tournament. Good luck to everyone that is playing. And uh, we hope to see you out here. Until next time, peace.